Not much going on here in Texas, but I'm still thinking about Louisiana in the wake of Hurricane Ida. Still widespread power outages in New Orleans, Hammond. However, Baton Rouge starting to get some power on in a lot of the neighborhoods. Some areas of New Orleans starting to get power. However, some of the estimates by Entergy indicate that it may be another several days before a lot of these subdivisions start coming back on. Well, here's the weather picture around the country this September 3rd. It is very seasonal. We've got plenty of tropical air flowing up through Texas, Louisiana, and you can see those dew points in the lower 70s. We have a front in the central plains, not very cold back behind that, upper 60s and lower 70s. However, there's a north wind and the convergence along that frontal zone helping to produce some showers and thunderstorms from southeastern Kansas into the Texas panhandle. The sea breeze coming up into the Houston area at this hour. And on the north end of that frontal zone, we've got showers and thunderstorms in Illinois and Wisconsin. Some of that residual moisture from Hurricane Nora is still in place in the Four Corners area. So it's kind of a wet and cool day in that part of the country. And then the tail end of the other frontal system right there from the Atlantic out into Florida giving us the typical rainy conditions that we see this time of year. Looks like a carbon copy of Wednesday's weather. Cool weather in the Alaskan interior, 50s, frontal system out to the west, and down to the south, beyond the Gulf of Alaska, there's a new frontal system that's taken aim on British Columbia and Washington. A quick peek up to the north shows a very cold air in place in the Arctic. You can see 24 degrees up there around Isaacson. And the vast number of thickness contours indicates that there's considerable depth to this cold air mass. We go from 20s and 30s up north to 50s down south, which is not a huge change. But the vast number of thickness lines indicates that there's a transition to much deeper air. And that's really what's bringing down those thickness values up to the north. And in eastern Canada, an outgoing frontal system, if you look closely, you can see 77 degrees there at Gander. Kind of a warm day in Newfoundland, south of that warm front, and up to the north, 40s and 50s. And on the backside, some heavy rain coming down in the Gulf leading into the St. Lawrence River. We will go straight to the NHC products. We got Hurricane Larry out there, 80 knots, but that's expected to come up rapidly to major hurricane status. That's expected to be a Category 4 storm, sustained winds 120 knots. The good news is it's heading north, or I should say northwest. And it doesn't look like there's any potential at this time to affect the northeast U.S. There's that outside chance we could see a track like that, but for one thing, this is almost a week off. Second thing is that a lot of these storms have been recurving to the north, but Bermuda Right up there, there's an outside chance they could see some problems from Larry. This is probably a good time to look at the extreme forecast index from the ECMWF model, indicating above average precip in Kansas and looks like some turbulent weather coming into the Pacific Northwest that'll affect mostly Vancouver Island. But for the US looks quiet on Saturday. For Sunday, looks pretty similar. Some indication of slightly hot weather in Texas. And then going into Monday, looks like a warm up in California and Nevada. For Tuesday, you can see the effects of Larry coming up to the northwest. Some wind expected in Chicago and Wisconsin, and hot weather extending up into Oregon and Washington. For Wednesday, that hot weather moves out into the Great Basin area. And then for Thursday, 
the hot weather moves into the central Rockies. And there's Larry getting a little bit uncomfortably close to the northeast U.S. However, I'm still holding on to hope that it will recurve as these other systems have been doing. And comparing these two frames, the motion does look about like that. So I'm not really seeing any big risk for the northeast U.S. just yet. But this is pretty far out. We're talking about the 11th and 12th, when this would become a problem. The thing I'm a little more concerned with is development in the Western Gulf. We've been talking about this for the past week, and the GFS and ECMWF have both indicated some potential there. And of course, anything coming out of the Western Gulf could affect Texas and Louisiana. Shown here is the current GFS pressure and precipitable water. So going into Friday and then Saturday, you can see this plume coming up from the south around the Yucatan going into Sunday and then Monday. Looks like there is some organization towards midweek, bringing up a weak tropical storm or a tropical depression north around Tuesday and coming into eastern Louisiana for Wednesday. And you can see that develop a little bit further, possibly a tropical storm could still be a tropical depression, but moving into the Pensacola area later on Wednesday. So that's the current GFS forecast on that. And in the wake of that, some higher pressures and northerly flow drying things out in the Gulf States region. Now the ECMWF solution on this, we don't get precipitable water at pivotal weather, but we can still use this precipitation field and we can see that stormy pattern right there south of Louisiana. And it looks like a very similar progression to the GFS, but maybe a little bit further east. Not very much impact for Louisiana, but certainly in western Florida for Wednesday. And that, again, looks like a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm. As far as Larry goes, the European model, keeping that out of the U.S. and even the Canadian Maritimes. And the GFS, likewise, keeping Larry out of the Northeast. But yeah, there's that system down to the south. And I think this very well could end up being Tropical Storm Mindy. Well, with all the focus on hurricanes, we've kind of lost sight of the hemispheric pattern. Let's take a look at that upper air pattern. This is 200 millibars up at about 39,000 feet. Jet stream across the southern Gulf of Alaska looks like a blocking pattern, Rex block, with a trough down here and a ridge up to the north. And that jet kind of comes through the other side like that, and it's divided into a series of mid-level troughs, kind of like that. The main subtropical high located from Oklahoma down into northern Mexico, and that's keeping things kind of hot and dry through that region there. The Gulf under easterly flow, so very tropical from Florida into South Texas. Now bringing this forward, looks like that Rex block is not in phase uh, as far as the trough and the ridge, they're kind of displaced there. So that allows the pattern to be broken down and we get into a progressive pattern. You can see a ridge building on the northwest coast area and that's followed by troughing. So things are moving. Not much weather in the southern U.S., but the northern half of the United States and southern Canada will get some rapidly changing weather over the next one to two weeks. Now, what's in store for the south? Let's run that back. We see that subtropical ridge start to break down just a little bit with this trough skirting the central plains on Monday after this weekend. And then that ridge kind of parts itself over the western U.S. So no wonder that part of the country is going to get some above normal temperatures. Now, we do open up a bit of northwesterly flow on the plains. If we have enough moisture in the low levels coming up to the north, this can be a good pattern for shearing of the storms 
So you get more organization of these storm complexes, and a lot of them tend to be nocturnal. So I'm not sure if that's what we're going to see next week, but the pattern is there, especially in Missouri and Kansas. Things move on off to the east, and you can see by late in the week, we've still got that upper level high over the desert southwest, so continued hot in that region. It does look like the pattern does break down. Gets very troughy in the western U.S. by the weekend of the 11th and 12th, and we see this cutoff low developing in Arizona by the 15th. Now, if that actually happens, we'll get this southern stream jet and some precip in the southern Rockies and southwest. And let's see, after that, this is getting probably way too far out, but it does look still changeable with a couple of very strong troughs moving through the U.S. A quick satellite tour of the country, stormy in Florida. This is not the time of year to be going to Disney World. Orlando, located right here, as a matter of fact, and you can see these storm complexes just kind of overrunning the area and laying down outflow boundaries. That's a very prominent one. You can see the center of that is comprised of glaciated anvil remnants in the center and an absence of low cloud. See that little patch right there of clear skies? Contrasts a lot from what we have up north in the more humid air that's not overturned. A lot of this is produced by sea breezes, lake breezes moving around, and old boundary remnants, and the storms just kind of form opportunistically. And that's where we're left right there. The only major synoptic boundary we have is that front. That's probably it right there. And we're getting a few towers along that as well. Sea breezes and lake breezes at work in Texas as well. They start out about right here. That's going to be the sea breeze. This looks like some other sort of boundary. But the main sea breeze moves inland. It's not as active in Louisiana because there's a little bit more stability. But in Texas, these storm cells do move north, and you can see the anvils shearing off towards the west in the easterly upper-level flow, since we're south of that subtropical high. The convection starting to emerge. This is clearly orographic, developing mostly on the mountaintops, where you have very strong heating from the sun coming down on these slopes facing to the south. So we get these storms going up. And gradually, they move out into the valleys during the evening. So the remnants of Hurricane Nora affecting this area still. The hurricane dissipated days and days ago in the Gulf of California. The remnants moved across, and the circulation is long gone, but the moisture lives on. Still got fires burning out there in California. We had some huge smoke plumes coming out of that area last week and dumping smoke across the northern Rockies and the northern plains. Looks like that's died down a little bit. Still got northerly flow off the Pacific coast. The cold currents, the northerly gradient, that's all producing this cold air advection with stratocumulus and stratus moving south down the California coast. The northern plains being affected by the tail end of these Canadian frontal systems moving southward. There's one front right there and another one a little bit further south. These have been producing some showers and thunderstorms on the higher terrain and on the mountains, and you can see the remnants of that stuff moving on off to the east, and a little bit of smoke overlying Wyoming. A very unsettled day in Illinois with a frontal system in that area. In fact, if you look right here in Illinois, you can see some rotation of the low cloud field. So that's going to correspond to that surface low, and we would expect that frontal system to be, well, uh, probably something about like that, and the warm front somewhere out ahead of it. So this is a warm air advection region, and then on the backside we have the cold air advection region with flow coming from the north. And for the northeastern U.S., 
cold air advection. This is a pattern that we saw all spring from March, April, May, north winds coming out of the eastern Canadian region. In this case, it's behind that Newfoundland storm that we showed you earlier. So we've got cold air advection flowing out over warm terrain. We get the destabilization from the bottom up, and that gives us a cold over warm layer, which means instability. And since there's moisture present, we get these cumulus clouds going up and embedded in those a few weak showers. And that's all for the Friday edition of Forecast Lab. We'll be back here on Monday for the private video for our Patreon supporters. And for everybody else, we'll see you here on Wednesday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.